and all the time. Amen. It's a blessing once more and again from the great God of heaven that he has extended us yet another opportunity that we ought to come together and worship and praise his holy divine name. Elder Dennis, I was trying to figure out what was going on. I could have swore I wore this suit like three Sundays ago and now I can't even get it to come across. I think this, the suit shrunk to something. I'm trying to see, I'm trying to see what's going on. <laughs> Amen. Amen. God is good. God is good. We had a we had a wonderful time um, on this morning. Amen. It was so good to see some faces that I hadn't seen in a long time. We had a good crowd here this morning, and the Lord was here. More importantly, God was here, um, and the people were blessed. We had a wonderful time this morning, and just so thankful for those that came back um, here on this um, this afternoon. Um, and just my luck, um, all of the notes that I had put out beside the scriptures seem to have disappeared um, on my way um, to serve this afternoon God is going to be with us amen God is going to be God is going to be with us amen uh, Psalm chapter 103 Psalm chapter um, 103 I'm going to try to give you the five B's this afternoon be brief brother be brief amen <laughs> so, Psalm chapter 103 and in your leisure you really should take the opportunity to read the entire chapter um, but we're going to read just verses 1 through 5. And I also want to take this opportunity to, again, encourage you all to come out and attend Wednesday night Bible study. We have, who are all having a wonderful time Wednesday night Bible study? Amen. Amen. They say they're having a wonderful time at Wednesday night Bible study. So, of course, we want to um, encourage those of you that have not attended, want you to come out um, and be a part of it as well, that it may be a blessing to your life. Uh, you, you don't want uh, one part of the body to get something that the other part of the body is not getting. Um, it's kind of like having a suit um, and you only get the top of the part clean and you don't get the pants clean. After a while, it's no longer a suit, but it's a sports coat. Um, and we don't want to become a sports coat. We want to be the whole thing. Amen. We want to... We want everybody to get the same thing so we can be on the same page. Amen. I like that. that that's a servant all by itself. <laughs> Amen. Psalms, Psalms chapter 103. Amen. Again, at verse number one. The Bible says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all of his wonderful benefits, who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thine diseases, who redeemed thy life from destruction, who crowned thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfied thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. I, I don't have a profound subject or title for you this afternoon. It's just Psalms 103. Amen. It's just Psalms 103. Amen. I also want to take this opportunity to encourage you all. I went this afternoon and I got my first shot um, of the, the COVID vaccine. So I got to go back in two weeks to get my other one. So I, I, I took me two Tylenol right after I got it. So hopefully I won't wake up in the morning with those stiff arm. Amen. So, amen. For those of you that haven't got it, again, want to encourage you all to take that opportunity. Y'all know there is much encouragement that can be found in the book of Psalms. I don't know about y'all, but I'm one of those people that whenever I'm finding myself facing in some kind of difficulty or situation, I can always find some sort of encouragement in the book of Psalms. And in this psalm that we have here in Psalms chapter 103, it can be divided in three different parts. In part number one, which we're looking at verses one and two, is where David invites his own soul to praise the Lord. David didn't have anybody. They didn't have to invite him. David invited himself. He invited his own soul to praise the Lord. And then in verses 3 through 19, David magnifies the benefits that we receive from God. And then in verses 20 through 22, David called on the abode of heaven to join him in praising the Lord. So David, we see him as the type of individual. He wasn't just interested in praising God by himself, but he wanted all of those that were in some type of relation to him to join in with him as he blessed the name of the Lord because he recognized what kind of benefits he received because he was a child of God so he wanted others to be recipient of those things as well. Now as you will see in this psalm it contains some of the most affectionate words and sentiments that one can say in praise to God. Even in verses 1 and 2 it says a psalm of David. Bless the Lord O my soul and all that is within me bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all of his wonderful benefits. Amen. Now here we see David is calling upon his entire being yeah. to praise the Lord. Yes. 
He wants to make sure that he is fully focused on praising God. David is trying to bring himself under subjection. And that's something that you got to do before you get to the house of God. That, that's not something that you decide on when you walk through the door. Before you walk out the doors of your house, you ought to already have it made up in your mind. I'm going with the intent pur purpose of worshiping God Almighty. I'm not worried about this. I'm not worried about that. But my purpose and my intention is to magnify and lift up the name of the Lord God. And beloved, this is the same attitude that we got to have when we worship God. The Bible lets us know in John chapter 4 that God is a what? And those that worship him must worship him in what? Spirit and in truth. And, and, and we need to call ourselves, we need to call even our very souls to be fully engaged in our worship of God. We don't need to have part of ourselves here and part of ourselves in the other place. We need to be fully engaged in the worship. If we're singing, we need to be fully engaged. If we're praying, we need to be fully engaged. If the preacher preaching, I don't care if it is two or three hours, we need to be fully engaged. We need to be fully engaged. When we sing praises to God, we need to think about the words that are being said. When prayers are being offered up to God, pay attention to what is being said. So in your private time, you can repeat the prayers. Go back and pray for somebody else. During the preaching, make sure you're attentive and paying attention so that it's not just going through one ear and going out the other, but it may find some good soil that the seed of the word of God can take root that it may bring forth increase even in your own life. Now, if, 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 if we come to worship with a half-hearted attitude, then we have not called upon our entire being, and therefore, we're not giving God our best. Now, when, when David says, bless the Lord, O my soul, he is proclaiming his thankfulness for God's love as well as for God's mercy. And next we see, do not forget all of his benefits. I don't know about y'all, but right now I am a recipient of the benefits of God. Just take a moment and say, yeah. You are a recipient of the benefits yeah. of God. You know, if somebody somewhere right now, in order for them to do that, they got to have a machine to help them to inhale and exhale. Somebody right now having trouble even doing that. But you did it without any assistance. You did it without any help. You are a recipient, even this moment, of the benefits of the Lord God Almighty. And now in the next verse, David is going to mention some benefits that come from God. And we need to pay attention to that in verse number three. He says, who forgives gives all of our iniquities. That's a benefit. Who heals all of our diseases. That's a benefit. Who redeems your life from destruction. That's a benefit. Who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies. All of those things are benefits from the Lord. Tell somebody I got a good benefit package. You just don't know about it. Now, now one of the greatest benefits that we receive from God, the first thing that we mention is the forgiveness of sins. Because without that, you wouldn't even have the opportunity to have a relationship with God. Which means that we would never be able to make it into heaven had it not been that we serve a God that is able to forgive us of our sins. And there is also the healing of diseases, which doesn't just include physical diseases. But it also got to do with spiritual diseases. We read of an encounter in the man of the Bible who was a paralytic, who was lame, who laid by the way. And there were his friends who wanted to take him to the presence of Jesus. But because of the press, because of the crowd, they were not able to get through the door. So the Bible says, they, you, you know, they had to be bold to cut a hole in somebody else's roof. Cut a hole in the roof of somebody else's house to lower this man down just so he could get in the presence of Jesus. And Jesus knew this man. He knew the reason he was coming. Jesus saw them on top of the roof while they was cutting the hole in the roof. He knew the intention of the man. He knew the heart of the man. He knew the man needed a physical healing. But before he healed him physically, Jesus healed him spiritually. So it doesn't, he's not just a healer of physical diseases, but he is also a healer of spiritual diseases, which can be summed up in one three-letter word, which is what? Sin. And he gave us the cure for all of this. By sending his own son to die for our sins. Yes. And everybody that is willing to embrace the gospel of Jesus Christ can and continue in the way of the Lord will have continually have the blessing of having the continual cleansing of our sins. 
by the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Now verse number five tells us, who satisfies you with good so that your youth is renewed like eagles. Now, this Bible uses the eagle several times to make a point. Now in the verse here, David is referring to, if you've ever heard of molting, you'll know that an eagle molts it every year. They get rid of their old feathers as they get ready to grow new ones. And so in this sense, the children of Israel should become renewed and strengthened by the good that God brings into their life. That's why Isaiah said in Isaiah chapter 40 and verse number 31, but those that wait upon the Lord shall what? Renew. Come on somebody. Those that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. After you have renewed your strength, you will renew your strength like eagles. They'll run and not get weary and then they'll walk and they will not even faint. I don't know if you have ever noticed this in your life but I have. When you get busy doing the work of the Lord you begin to forget how bad things are in your life or what you did in yeah, the past yeah, yeah. and you focus in yeah. on the task that is at hand and it gives you renewed strength to keep on pressing on. To keep on persevering. I'm reminded of what David says in following verses. In verses 6 through 9. He says the Lord executes righteousness and justice for all who are oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses. His acts to the children of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious. Slow to anger. And abounding in mercy. He will not always strive with us. Nor will he keep his anger forever. Now here church. David points out another important characteristic about God, and that is that God does execute righteousness yeah. and justice. A lot of people today only want to talk about, oh, God is so merciful. Oh, God is so gracious. But we don't want to talk about the fact that God is a just God and that his mercy and grace won't be around and available to us for all times. This is why David says that he will not always strive with us, nor will he keep his anger forever. So God is not just a God of mercy, and he's not just a God of grace, he is also a God of wrath. He is a God of punishment, and this can clearly be seen throughout the Bible. There have been many who tried to test God's limitation, and when they did, they just found out pretty quick that God's limitations do not reach out to infinity, and he will unleash his wrath even against his own people. Now, in our Old Testament lesson, we can see over and over again how God would bless somebody to become king. But if that king didn't follow God's plan, God would bless somebody else to become king. And if they didn't do it, God would replace them. You know what? If you don't want to do what God wants you to do, guess what? He got somebody. He got somebody that he can put in your path. He got somebody that's going to do what it is that he's called them to do. The Bible says um, in 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse number 9 that the Lord is not what? Slack. Concerning his promises, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all oh. should come to repentance. So, as you can see, God is patient. And his patience, and he wants everybody, men, women, boys, and girls, to have the chance to be saved, but this time span won't last forever. Because Jesus will come back again someday and then everybody will be judged and if they are found outside of Christ or they have been unfaithful, then heaven shall not be their home. Yeah. Now David finally points out his mercy and he uses Moses and the children of Israel here as an example. And when you read the story of Moses, we talked about that this morning, you'll certainly see the mercy of God. Because over and over again, these people rebelled against God. Over and over again, these people, and none of them deserved God's help. But yet and still, God continued to help them. But at the same time, he showed his wrath. Yes. At the same time, on several occasions, and many people died because of their disobedience, because of God, great mercy, David continues on and says this in verse number 10. He has now dealt with us according to our own sins. 
I believe I need to read that again because apparently you didn't just take a minute and clean out your ear because you didn't just hear what I just said. You didn't, you didn't even hear what I just quoted. He has not dealt with us according to our own sins, nor has he rewarded us according to our own iniquity. Had simply put, had he paid you what you deserve, you wouldn't be looking at me right now. Had he paid you what you deserve, you wouldn't be inhaling and exhaling his air right now. He would have been cut your air supply off. But because he does not get reward us according to what our sins and our iniquities deserve, now you and I have the opportunity when we find ourselves on the outskirts with God, when we find ourselves outside of the track, we have an opportunity that we can come to him and say, Father, hey, I, you know. You, you, you were there, you saw me when I did it You know Lord and I just need you to wash me up Make me clean and give me another opportunity Y'all already know that if God dealt with us according to our own sins None of us would be alive today Had God dealt with us according to our own sins None of us would be able to do anything And he says in verse number 11 through 13 He says for as the heavens are high above the earth So great is his mercy toward those that fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. As a father pities his children, so the Lord pities those that fear him. Now, Churchill David is just again stressing out how merciful God is to those that fear him and for those that show reverence towards him. Now, when some show reverence towards some, one that usually means they will abide by their wishes, which means that God shows mercy to those that are seeking after him. God shows mercy to those that are striving to live by his command. I didn't say he shows mercy to those that are following all his commands, crossing all the T's, dying all the I's, but that God will bless those and God is looking for those that are seeking after him and striving to do his will. Can I tell you, God will bless somebody that will be honest and say, God, I don't have it all. God, I can't do it all. God, you know I'm weak in some areas in my life. But Lord, wherever you want to send me, Lord, I'm willing to go. Lord, whatever you want me to do, Lord, I'm willing to do it. I'm not perfect by a long shot, but Lord, whatever you've given me, Lord, use it at your disposal. You can be reckless without my permission, Lord. Whatever it is that you want to do, Lord, do it. For whom the Lord loves, he chastens and scourges every son whom he receives. If you endure chastening, God deals with you as with sons. For what son is there whom a father does not chasten? But if you are without chastening, of which all have become partakers, then you are illegitimate and not sons. Furthermore, we have had human fathers who corrected us, and we paid them respect. Shall we not much more readily be in subjection to the father of spirits and of life? For they indeed for a few days chasing us as seen best to them. Mama whooped you. you Y'all get what I'm saying. He chasing us as it seemed best to them. But he for our profit that we may be partakers of his holiness. Now no chastening seems to be joyful for the present but painful. Nevertheless afterward it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. There's a blessing even in God's word. Amen. God's word provides for us all of the things that we need. I love even every chapter of the book of Psalms. You can look through it as David responds to God, as David converses with God throughout the various trials of his life, throughout the various circumstances of his life. And if anything we could take away from the life of David, the struggles of David, David knew where to go to. When David found himself in trouble, when David found himself in situations, David knew exactly where to go to. He knew exactly how to handle his problem. And that is why even though David had some of the biggest moral failures that you could ever call, the Bible still says, and David was a man after God's own heart. And, and you know, we love to talk about David and Abraham brought stars. Oh, David. Oh, you remember what David said? Oh, yeah, in the song. Oh, save the Psalm chapter 23. But you know, if David was alive today, we'd write a letter on him. 
You know, if David was alive today, we talk about him. Yo, you heard about David? You heard what he did to Uriah? You know he had Uriah. You put out there on the front line. You heard what he did with Bathsheba? You heard about this? You heard about that? But even after all of his moral faith, all, all of the things that he had did, the Bible says that David was a man at the God's own heart. And I love how David didn't wait. You know, we quote the scripture often, you know, I was glad. I said this one, you know, I was glad when they said unto me, come and let us go into the house of the Lord. He didn't say I was glad when I got there. I was glad when they said unto me, <laughs> let us go into the house of God. And you know, that's the attitude that we got to have. Don't just get excited just because you've been invited. Don't just get excited because you got that man, before you even get here, man, I'm excited. Before I even get here, my mind is already set. I'm already ready for the worship experience because we got to get our mindset out of this. God is the performer and we are the audience. That ain't how it go. God is the audience. We are the ones that are performing. And as we offer up our worship to God, you may not be able to sing like Mahalia. You may not be able to sing like, uh, you know, Smokey Robinson or anybody, uh, you know, in, or anybody like that. But when you sing unto him, the Bible says that it comes up before him as a sweet smelling, what it it's sweet smelling Savior. God gets honor when we worship him, when we praise his name. And can I tell you, from the outside, somebody looking at you, they may be able to say, ooh, that person is worshiping. But God knows what's really on your mind. God knows that even though your eyes are closed and even though you're swaying from side to side, God knows you want, okay, man, I got to get to Walmart by 3 o'clock because I know they got a certain amount of eggs on the shelf and I need to get there before them folk get there and get it. I wonder, I wonder, is the line going to be long at the potter's house when I get out of service? I wonder, I wonder, I, oh, I wonder about, is Sheila going to be at work on tomorrow? I don't feel like he and her mouth. I don't feel like dealing with that. He already knows what's on your mind. He knows what's on our heart. God knows that sometimes you hear, well, what, what, uh, what the lady said, she said, sometimes you hear, but your mind is out there. You, what, what, what you know about that? You know, you, 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 you hear, but your mind. <laughs> that took some of y'all way back. So, <laughs> we're here, but my mind is somewhere else. And that ought not be the case when we come before the presence of God, when we come into the worship of God, we ought to bring our whole self, our whole heart, our whole mind, our whole soul, and our whole being. Put our all in so that we'll never be able to say, you know, I didn't get anything out of it. It just didn't do anything for me today. Uh, you know, I just don't know what was going on. It was just kind of a little off today. I just didn't get anything out of it. Did you bring anything to put in? Well, what, look, look, I, I didn't just open a bank account and I, ain't, I put $30 in there and I go up there the next day tell me I don't want to withdraw $3,000. And the folk going to look at me, might call the police on you. Might, man, be looking, at, be looking at you crazy. Like, man, you already know. You, you, I know as well as you know you ain't got but $30 in here so you can't get no more than what you to put in. Same way it is when you can only get what you put in. So when, when you give your all, when you sing your best, when you love your best, when you do your best, you'll never be able to say, I didn't get anything out of it. Because you have given your all to God and you recognize that your worship in and of itself, and my worship ain't got nothing to do with Brother Smith. It ain't got nothing to do with the name. But worship is a personal thing between the individual and God. That's why it don't do you no good to worry about how somebody else is doing, what somebody else is doing, because God is focused on you. And he's paying attention to where your mind is. He's paying attention to the intent of your heart. Psalms 103. <laughs> he is a loving God. He is a kind God. And all of us, even right now, are living off of his mercy. We're living off of his goodness. We are living off of the benefits that he's given us. And you know, even on tomorrow, you're going to be dependent on his benefits. You're going to be dependent on him to wake you up in the morning. You're going to be dependent on him because it's going to be food in your refrigerator for you to get. 
You're going to be dependent on him because you're going to get in a vehicle that's going to crank up without issues and you're going to go to your job and you're going to work, you're going to punch in, you're going to punch out, you're going to go back to a home the same way that you found it. You're going to watch your stories, you're going to eat, you're going to repeat. You, you know, all of that, even though it seems simple and even though it's your daily routine, something that you do out of normalcy, it's a benefit. Every foot that you put in front of the other is a benefit from the Lord. Every word that you utter out of your mouth is a benefit from the Lord. Because you know if somebody right now got a mouth just like you, but a word won't come out of it. You know if somebody somewhere right now just like you got two legs, but it won't take them anywhere. Somebody right now just like you got a mind, but they don't know who they are, don't know if they're going or they're coming. Benefits. So don't wait for God to give you a big fine gift wrapped up with a bow on top before you decide to thank him. Start thanking God for the little things that he has done in your life. For surely, if we just thank God for the little things that he's done, guess what, man? You, you wouldn't have enough time on this earth. What we said, we had 10,000 tons. We still wouldn't be able to do it enough. God is good. And we thank him for this opportunity that he has blessed us with. Maybe there's someone even here on this afternoon. Maybe you're watching us. Um, you are not yet a Christian. You don't know the Lord as your Savior. You have not yet become a member of the body of Christ, which is the church of Christ. You come by hearing his word, believing the same, repenting of your sins, confessing Christ as your Savior, being buried with him in baptism, have your sins washed away, done away with, never to come before you in this life, neither the life that is to come, and the Lord himself will add you to his body. Uh, maybe you're here on this afternoon, or maybe you're watching us, and you're standing in the need of prayer. Um, don't, don't be ashamed. Don't ever get to a point in your life where you are too proud to ask for prayer, because guess what? Everybody, either they say it or not, is standing in the need of prayer. Somebody need him for one thing, somebody need him for another, but we all need him right about now. So if you're here this afternoon and you're subject to the invitation, maybe you need to come to a relationship with Christ, or maybe you're standing in the need of prayer, whatever it is, you have that opportunity now. Come to Jesus as together we stand and sing the song of invitation. Somebody prayed for me, oh, they had me on their mind. Took a little time to 